Let's consider some statements which we hear in our daily life. Water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. Ball thrown vertically upwards go up and come down eventually. Metal gets oxidized when exposed to air. Bus may arrive at the bus stop at 4 o'clock. It may probably rain today. Chances of India winning today's cricket match against South Africa is high. Consider all these six statements. First three are different than the next three statements. First three set of statements are the facts. No matter what, these events happen under similar conditions. There is no doubt in the outcome of these events. For example, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. It is scientifically proven fact and no other possible result occur if the experiment is conducted. But same cannot be said for the last three set of statements because there is uncertainty involved in those events. India may or may not win. It is a game and outcome cannot be predicted. One cannot say with 100% certainty that these statements hold true all the time. We come across such things almost every day and we need to deal with these probable things more often. It may rain today, so I need to carry my umbrella. Car probably get puncture on the way, so it is safe to carry extra tire in the car. And most of the plan we make for these probable things or events depend on the chances of occurrence of these events or something termed as probability. Let me explain this with an example. We always carry an umbrella with us in rainy season, but we don't do this in other seasons. But it doesn't mean that it would not rain during the non-rainy seasons. Sometimes it rains during the summer and also during the winter. But the probability or chance of raining is more in rainy season than in other seasons. So, our plans also vary based on this probability or chance of occurrence of the event. Can you observe there is a degree of uncertainty involved in these events? There is a branch of mathematics which deals with such events by providing a way to measure the uncertainty quantitatively. The chance of happening of an event when expressed quantitatively is called as probability. Let's learn more about probability. There are two types of probability. Theoretical probability, which is also called as classical probability. Second one is experimental probability or empirical probability. We will discuss about both with one simple example. Consider the example of tossing a coin. If you toss a coin, what is the probability of getting a head? You would say, chances of getting head is 50%. This is a theoretical answer. Chances of getting head or tail is 50-50. One out of two chances you may get head if you toss a coin. Conclusions without conducting any experiment is called as theoretical probability. What is the experiment probability then? If you find out probability with multiple trials or experiment, then it is called as experimental probability. That is, you toss a coin and each time you record the observation. And then finally you find out what is the probability of occurrences of heads. When coins are tossed 4040 times, out of 4040, 2048 times it turned out head. That is, probability is 0 0.507. Similarly, when coins are tossed 10,000 times, out of 10,000, 5,067 times it was head. In this case, the probability is 0 0.5067. Similarly, when coin was tossed 24,000 times, 12,012 times, it was head. Probability is 0 0.5005. What we observe here is, from a theoretical probability, we saw that it was 0 0.5. And from experimental probability, we observe that each time it was near 0 0.5. That is 0 0.507, 0 0.5067 and 0 0.5005. We can conclude that result of experimental probability is almost equal to theoretical probability when the number of trials or the number of experiment conducted is more. In experimental probability, we conduct experiments 
to conclude probability ratio. These experiments can be of two types, deterministic or predictable experiments. Second one is random experiments. Predictable experiments are those experiments when repeated under identical conditions produce the same result or outcome. For example, measuring the diameter of a coin or determining the boiling point of water. Random experiments are the experiments when repeated under identical conditions do not produce the same results or outcomes. For example, tossing a coin or throwing a die. In this chapter, we will be discussing about random experiments only. The random experiment is the one in which it has more than one outcome and it is not possible to predict the outcome in advance.